As with Sergei Prokofiev's Peter and the Wolf, Baker designed it so that different musical instruments represent each of the major characters. Winnie the Pooh and the Honey Tree was released theatrically. Shortly afterwards, Walt started production on the second featurette, Winnie the Pooh and the Blustery Day. But he did not live to see the fulfillment of his prophecy about the popularity of the Pooh characters. Three years later, we put out the second Winnie the Pooh, which was Winnie the Pooh and the Blustery Day. And it won the Academy Award. Not only did it win the Academy Award, it was a very, very, very successful featurette. And Winnie the Pooh became like an established Disney character. I mean, he was as, as fully accepted around the world as any of the previous characters had been. Now, that was, in a sense, a tribute to Walt Disney, too, because it, was, it came out after Walt's death, of course. And uh, yet, it was something he had personally been very much involved with. So, although he wasn't there to supervise it, Winnie the Pooh and the Lusty Day was Walt's last great achievement. And now people refer to it as, as, as another Walt Disney masterpiece. In keeping with Walt's original intention, the first three shorts were combined into a full-length feature in 1977. Everybody involved in this property knew the end of the uh, feature was going to be Pooh and Christopher Robin saying goodbye. We never ever put it into any of the featurettes because it was too concluding, it was too ending. A few years later, they were going to do a longer version of Pooh, and then they were, were going to animate and complete the, the last sequence. It's very touching and very sentimental. It's a little boy saying goodbye to his childhood, his basic childhood. This was my first exposure to that story, and I didn't know what was coming. Got to that, and I'm reading this dialogue and just completely lost it. And that's what you hear in the show. And when I saw this as an adult, I thought, man, that's like the best scene I've ever done. Because it was totally real. You know something, Pooh? I'm not going to do just nothing anymore. You mean never again? Well, not so much. Pooh? When I'm away just doing nothing, will you come up here sometimes? You mean alone? Just me? Yes. And Pooh? Promise you won't forget me? Ever? Oh, I won't, Christopher. I promise. Not even when I'm a hundred? How old shall I be then? Ninety-nine. <laughs> Silly old bear. Disney has to be credited for bringing the popularity of, of uh, Milne's story of Winnie the Pooh to the American public. Well, there's certainly an honesty and an innocence to these Pooh characters. They aren't putting anything over on anybody. They don't try to put anything over on each other. They're very honest with each other. I think they believe in each other and care for each other. And I think that the kids could get a wonderful lesson from that. So can grown-ups. Pooh is the essence of childhood adventure, childhood imagination, childhood uh, fantasies. It's the perfectly safe world. Everybody is nice. They're all characters. They're all peculiar. Rabbit's very fastidious and fussy, and Owl is a windbag. He talks all the time, but they're all lovable. They're all wonderful. And Pooh, of course, is a bear of very little brain, but he's all love. And it's safety. And it's... it's purity and it's something I wish we all had more of in this world. We never will forget our hero of the witch, our quick thinking mind, sinking poo there, and think little indeed, a dog, a friend in need, but truly they're the heroes of the day. So we say, get the way for the secret and the fool, be great and true. Oh, 
Piglet, too. Uh -huh. Uh -huh.